Georgia Southern football with Coach Paul Johnson. Brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Always Coca-Cola. Rosier Ford, Lincoln Mercury in Statesboro, the dealership that does business the right way. East Georgia Regional Medical Center, compassionate care without compromise. Hargrave Wireless, private, powerful, perfectly clear. And Sea Island Bank, the better way to bank. We're here in Chattanooga under threatening skies, and the, the weather looks like that uh, it could come down on us at any time. But, you know, both teams are going to have to play in the weather if, it, if we get rain. Uh, certainly Chattanooga has uh, had an outstanding start to their season uh, with a newfound running game to go with their uh, always uh, impressive passing game. Defensively, they seem to have added a lot of speed and really uh, run into the football. And, uh, you know, it ought to be quite a challenge for us to, tonight. We're looking forward to, uh, to playing. I think that... Uh, you know, in all honesty, we haven't played up to our capabilities yet this year, and uh, maybe tonight's the night, and uh, certainly we need to play well to have a chance. Well, uh, you know, people ask about coming back here to play again uh, to Chattanooga, and certainly we've got some fond memories of a year ago, but uh, more important, I'd like to see our football team play tonight like we played here a year ago. Uh, you know, last year's gone. It was great. It was a great run, but, uh, you know, we're into this season, and uh, – we don't have time to think about what happened last year. Well, this week we've had a pretty good week of practice, I think. Probably Wednesday we had our best day offensively that we may have had all year. We've uh, reshuffled the offensive line a little bit. Charles Clark will start at center. Derek Nobles will start at right guard. And, uh, you know, we're anxious to go out and play and, and see how those guys are going to do. We're going to roll some guys in there. And uh, Mike Ward will get his start uh, back at linebacker on defense tonight. He's back healthy. And, uh, you know, it's a chance to come and play again and see if we've made any improvement. We'll be back with first half highlights, but first, the Coca-Cola play of the day. Everybody and welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2000. I'm Ted Byrne along with Coach Paul Johnson. And Coach, another Southern Conference win under our belt tonight as we came back to the city that crowned us the national champion. Right, and, uh, you know, feel a little better about this one. I thought our guys played better. I was proud of them and, uh, you know, against a pretty good football team, I think. And we went out and... Uh, you know, I felt like we dominated a football game. Well, won the toss, deferred to the second half, ended up kicking off to Chattanooga. Right, and they put together a nice drive and uh, converted some third downs on us. And, uh, you know, we got a big play. Mike Ward made a tip down there on a, on a pass play. We got a little pressure, and Mike tipped it, and I think Nate Gates came up with a big interception. And did, indeed he did. Gates got the interception on that and gave Georgia Southern the ball back on their own eight-yard line. Start off with an incomplete pass, then J.R. Uh, got a five-yard run, and then a great pitch to Weathers. It seemed like the slot backs were blocking, and you were able to really kick it outside. Right, and they were very committed to stopping the fullback, so they were popping the linebacker a lot to that side. So once we got the ball pitched, you know, it was two-on-two two with the ball carrier on the perimeter, and our receivers and slot backs did a nice job blocking. Chattanooga was doing a lot of crazy things defensively. In fact, one time they came with a blitz, and J.R. ran right around them. Right, well... You know, they were running a lot of what we call easy stunts or one-two exchanges to try to stop the option. And when they did that, they were vulnerable to, you know, outside. And you couple that with popping the inside linebackers and, uh, you know, it made us have a, a chance to do run the perimeter game. Georgia Southern's first possession ended in a punt, and then Chattanooga got the ball on their own 12, and then with about 10 seconds left in the first quarter, uh, they were able to go down and get a field, guard, a field goal that was good for about 25 yards. Right, and they, again, they put together some time-consuming drives there in the first half. You know, converted some third downs and some nice drives. But the thing is, the field shrunk on them, and as it got down closer, you know, we were able to play, uh, play better defense, keep everybody in front of us, and uh, keep them out of the end zone. Chattanooga's drive would cover 80 yards in 15 plays. They did eat up almost six minutes a clock. Then Georgia Southern in the second quarter would get the ball on their own 17 and go 83 yards in four plays. Only took us a minute and a second to get in there on a 59-yard touchdown pass to Chris Johnson. Right, and we had Chris open in the first series on the other side off play action and missed him. And uh, 
you know, he was running wide open behind him, and uh, Jay did a nice job lobbing it down there, and Chris caught it and got it in the end zone. Longest touchdown pass for JR, longest catch for Chris Johnson. Chattanooga would get the ball on the uh, kickoff on their own 30, and uh, that possession would end up in a punt, and uh, Georgia Southern would then get the ball back on our own 24-yard line. Weathers rips nine yards for a first down, and then uh, we get another pitch to Weathers for seven yards, and then another 59-yard touchdown pass, this time to Derek Owens. Right, and it was great to see Derek uh, make a big play for us. He, we, just a curl out route, and uh, you know, Jay did a nice job reading it and throwing the curl in there. And, Dio caught it, and when he uh, caught it, he took off with it. Got some nice blocks downfield. Georgia Southern would go 76 yards in five plays, eat up two minutes and 17 seconds. That made the score 14 to three for Georgia Southern. Then Chattanooga would get the ball back on their 35, and uh, in, they would run a couple of plays. They got a first down. They threw an incomplete pass, and then there was some great pressure by uh, Freddie Prescada, who put some pressure on their quarterback. Right. We, uh, you know, we. Started slow trying to get pressure on them. We weren't getting a lot of pressure. And as the game built on, I thought our guys did a good job picking it up on the pass rush. It was fourth and three, and they looked like the, they were going to line up for a punt, and then uh, or for a play, I should say, but then ended up uh, quick kicking. It was a nice play. They got a little pooch kick on us and pinned us back uh, deep down in our own territory. Georgia Southern would then get the ball on the 10 yard line and uh, would uh, run. Uh, the first play would be a big run for 12 yards. Uh, Peterson would get seven on another one. And then yet another pitch to Weathers, this time for 13 yards and a first down. Right. And, uh, you know, we're starting to move the ball and we had it down on, uh, starting to get it in the scoring range. And it was disappointing we didn't get any points there at the end of the first half. We had to burn a couple of our timeouts, having, you know, substitution problems defensively. But we got down there and, uh, you know, we dropped a pass that we could have caught a touchdown, and uh, then we had a guy we felt like was open on the post, and the ball got tipped, and they came up with a big interception. JR looked a lot more comfortable out there in this game than he has the first couple of games, although the half did end with our possession uh, with the uh, interception, and then at halftime, it was Georgia Southern 14 and Chattanooga 3. And what was the mood at the, of the locker room at halftime? Well, I th you know, we had played pretty good. I was a little disappointed we had 300 yards and only 14 points. But I, I guess when I thought about it, we'd only had the ball four times. I knew we were going to get it to start the third quarter, and, and I told the guys that was going to be big. All right, we'll be back with second half highlights right after we take this time out. successful Division I AA football program, but they also sport one of the division's top number of media contingent, evident by the over 20 agencies who applied for press credentials for Media Day. While the number of media members at a Georgia Southern practice session fluctuates with the Eagles' win-loss record, there have been a few that have been here since the beginning. First high above Paulson Stadium is the Georgia Southern Radio Sports Network and the trio of Hugh Colson, Frank Inman, and the voice of the Eagles, Nate Hirsch. Oh, needless to say, none of us had any idea when it started, actually back in 81 with those four games that we played, uh, a couple against the Florida State JVs and the Fort Benning Doughboys and such, that things would evolve as quickly as they have. But I think those of us that have been around since the inception appreciate everything that's happened and especially uh, all the good times. From radio to television and the man who's been on the scene since 1985, WTOC sports anchor Mitch Glicken. Probably the most memorable thing as I look back is after they won the first national championship, meeting the team at the airport, they came back from uh, Tacoma, Washington. It was literally, uh, my goodness, it was 3.30 in the morning. and It was so exciting. I was just starting out in the business 15 years ago, and, and to be a part of that uh, it is what I, I think is the most memorable. As for the Eagle beat writers, seniority goes to the Savannah Morning News' Don Heath. I think a memorable moment that I've had here 
was uh, to see 25,700 people in the 89 championship game. Just to see all those people here and all rooting for Georgia Southern was pretty special. They were undefeated. Uh, it was Coach Russell's last season. They were coming off uh, losing the championship game, and they had something to prove, and it was, it was fun just to watch them go about doing their business. And last but not least, the man behind the scenes of the Eagle Coaching Show, producer Dave German. I'm close to the program. I graduated from Georgia Southern in 1985. Uh, started doing the uh, show in 1985 immediately after I graduated, and uh, it's just exciting football. Most memorable moment. Uh, gee, I would have to say it was uh, actually us losing in the championship game in 1988, watching Raymond Gross work out during the summer and come back the following year and go undefeated. 34 yards, Raymond Gross making the two big third down plays. In order for us to, for, for the option to work, which is that, that's what we want to get back to, uh, you know, we had to throw the ball. That was just a known fact. I think the offensive line really came out this week, this whole week during practice, and just really, really worked hard. And uh, we knew what we had to do. We know we've been getting criticized a little bit, and I think that just helped every, everybody to get, be motivated. I know when I walked into the uh, stadium the first time, it kind of gave me chills, you know, from the last time we were here. And I think it, you know, I think it gave the whole team a little momentum, you know, knowing that the last time we were here, you know, that we won a national championship. And Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2000. I'm Ted Byrne with Coach Paul Johnson. Coach, you were going to get the kick in the second half to start it, and it looked like you wanted to establish Peterson right off the bat. You came out and ran him four straight times. Well, we were, we were trying to find a way. They were, they were committing so many people to taking him on the dive on the triple that uh, we were trying to find a way to get him the ball, uh, you know, pitch it to him. He's such a good player. You hate to take him out. Although I will say this, I talked to him at halftime and said, you know, Pete, just be patient because they're really ganging up on him. We're really hurting him on the perimeter. He goes, Coach, I don't care. Just keep doing it. He said, we just keep moving the ball. He didn't care if he got it or not as long as we were moving the ball. And he almost beat Chattanooga with their own game. They are known as the air attack, but then we came out right after establishing Peterson for four straight runs and connected on a big pass play. Right. Well, they were committing so many people to the option. Uh, you know, play action was hurting them. And, and Jay did a nice job on our half roll game. Uh, our A-backs did a good job running the ball and, and made some plays, and, and our wide receivers all came up big, too. After that 13-yard pass play that got us the first down, a big pitch to Myers for five yards. Right, and again, we were trying to hit the perimeter some because they were so committed to the fullback. And JR goes wide on a run for about 11 yards, picks up another first down, and then uh, Peterson would also get six more yards and another first down down to the UTC-9. Right, and, uh, you know, we. We came in, Mike Stewart got a carry in there. It was good to see Mike get a run, and uh, and we had a, a nice pass to Andre Weathers on a, on a little delay that uh, Jay made a nice uh, throw, and, and Andre made a nice catch for the touchdown. Eight-yard pass play to Andre Weathers. 13 plays, 62 yards, five minutes and 22 seconds. One of the few drives that took more than two minutes in the game. Offense was able to score quick and put the defense right back out on the field. Well, it was, and, and it was big to come out and, and start the second half with a score, I thought, too. You know? You know, because it, there hadn't been many possessions in the first half, and to come out and go up 21 to three really, uh, I thought, made a statement. So then, with the Chattanooga getting the ball on their 31, we come out. Jamar Jones gets a huge sack in uh, against Chattanooga, and then really forces them to punt the ball, and it kind of goes off the side of their foot. Right, the guy didn't hit it uh, very good, and for one of the few times we got good field position. Uh, it seemed like we were starting inside our 20 with regularity there. No doubt, Georgia Southern got the ball on the 43-yard line, started off with a pitch to Mark Myers. Right, and again, we were trying to work the perimeter because they were they were keying so much on the uh, inside play and trying to stop Adrian Peterson. And Adrian wouldn't be denied because then he would rip one for about 14 yards. Right, and you know, again, we found a way to get him the ball pitched, and Jay was doing a nice job executing. Then you would get uh, Jay, uh, you get the ball to Jr. on a good run. He got a couple of great blocks. Got the ball down to the three as he picked up nine yards on that one. And then eventually you'd call Adrian's number for the touchdown. Right. We changed up our uh, goal line offense a little bit. We were struggling and we decided we'd just go with two split ends and get in the power eye. And uh, Mike Stewart and Terry Owens went out to lead block and 
you know, if you give Adrian a little bit of seam down there, he's going to get it in the end zone. 545 left to go in the third quarter. Georgia Southern drove 57 yards in eight plays, took a minute and 51 to do it, and made the score 28 to 3. Then we would uh, kick it off to Chattanooga. They'd get it on their own 28. They'd come out with a pass play, but Middlebrooks read it well and blocked the pass. Right. Uh, again, I thought in the second half we started to get a lot better pressure on their passer. And, uh, you know, he's a very talented player, but he's not very tall. And if you get in a throwing lane, sometimes you can bat some pass. Even though they would score on this possession, it was a great uh, uh, blitz that we forced them into a, an incomplete pass. Uh, had a lot of guys uh, coming in on the quarterback. Well, we did, and we helped them a bunch. You know, we had a late hit on the sideline that gave them 15 yards. It wasn't very smart. And then, uh, you know, they hit a nice throw, a nice fade right down the end zone. The kid made a nice catch. It was a nice throw. Six-yard touchdown pass to Ronnie Strickland. Uh, their drive went uh, 72 yards in eight plays. They took 303. That made it 28 to 10 with about 231 to go in the third quarter. Georgia Southern would then get the ball back on their own 10. And uh, it would be uh, uh, the first play of the fourth quarter would end with Jr. Uh, scrambling and passing incomplete, though. But he looked really agile in getting out. Did a nice job scrambling and getting out and found Chris Johnson on the sideline there. And, uh, you know, it was unfortunate we just dropped the ball. But uh, yeah, we would have called it back. We didn't get a, our, our offensive line lined up in the backfield. So uh, called on Scott Shelton to punt. He came off, came in and got off a great punt for 10 it. UTC right back on their own one-yard line. And then uh, they would put together a, a couple of runs and a couple of passes. But then a great sack by Winston Hardison, uh, minus them six yards on the play. Right, Winston came in. He wasn't, he's not getting a lot of plays. And it's good to see him come in and make a big play for us. With about 10 minutes left to go in the game, you forced them to punt on fourth and 16. They punted it uh, uh, a great punt and put Georgia Southern down on our own two. Yeah, it was disappointing. I mean, we had punted them out on the one. And uh, they got off the one and punted us back on the two. It really uh, kind of changed the field. And part of that was mine. I didn't put a punt returner back because I felt like at that point in the game, if they punted the ball and as well as we were moving the ball, uh, I really didn't care where we got it. I just wanted to make sure they punted. There was a, a penalty on the Chattanooga bench, and then Adrian Peterson ripped it for 11 yards. Then you would get Myers on back-to-back -back runs, one of his for about 19. Right, and uh, again, the guys were doing a good job blocking the perimeter. and. Mark's a very talented guy. Our eight backs should be very good with the ball. They're, they're fast and quick. It was good to finally see them get off some tonight. And at the point when we thought Adrian Peterson may have a game under 100 yards, he goes 20 yards down to the Chattanooga 17. Right. I think, you know, as the game goes on, he just gets stronger and stronger. And, uh, you know, we were able to slip him inside a couple times on long yardage situations. Second long. We, he had a nice long run. The 20 yarder, I think, was third and 10. And I don't think they thought he was coming. And, uh, you know, the tackle got up the field, and Jay made a nice read, and he got in the secondary really fast. And that drive would end with a 39-yard field goal by Scott Shelton, which would make it 31-10. to 10. And then Chattanooga would get the ball in their 30. They would throw a pass, and it would be intercepted by LeVar Rainey with about 4.22 left in the game. Right, big play by LeVar, and, uh, you know, we put our, our guys back in and got one first down, and then we were able to get a lot of the second-team guys in there, third-team guys. I thought Melvin Cox made a nice run. He got the ball down to about the three-yard line. And it was unfortunate one of our guys had gotten a clip over there and called it back. And at that point, we'd run the clock down under a minute. And, you know, when the game's 31 to 10 like it was, you really don't know what to do. It's fourth and four. You hesitate to try to run the ball. It feels like you're running up the score. So we like to kick a field goal. Disappointed we didn't make it, though. 31-10 would be the final score. And uh, Georgia Southern would walk away with another Southern Conference win. And we'll come back. We'll talk a little bit about next week's opponent when we return here on Georgia Southern Football 2000. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2000. I'm Ted Byrne with Coach Paul Johnson. Coach, a tough game today, uh, pretty physical and pretty intense. It was. I, you know, I hope we came out of the game pretty good injury-wise. Uh, We'll know more about it tomorrow and go back and uh, start to get ready for VMI. Uh, they played Furman very tough today. I think it was 35-21. They've kind of changed gears, changed their offense. They're in a run and shoot now, throwing the ball around. And uh, they always give us trouble defensively. They're well coached and they'll play hard. Cal McCombs, of course, coming in, taking over that program. And uh, you're no stranger to him or he to you. No, that's right. We've played against each other for a lot of years when he was at Air Force. And, you know, a lot of respect for Cal. They do a really good job. Sometimes they get a little... Uh, overmatched, but uh, I, I know that they'll come down and they'll play hard and 
Yeah, I'm anxious to watch them on film and see how much they've really changed. While it was nice to come to the city where we won the national championship, it'll be better to be at our house next week. Yeah, it will, and I hope that uh, you know we'll have a good crowd and. Uh, Hopefully we can make as much improvement from uh, this week to next week as we did this last week to this one. Coach, I think the biggest thing that we saw this week was a juggle in the offensive line, and it seemed to work. Well, it seemed to. We'll, we'll look at the tape and evaluate, but uh, I thought Charles Clark did some good things at center. All right. We'll see you next week with highlights of the Georgia Southern VMI game when we return with Georgia Southern Football 2000. For Coach Paul Johnson, I'm Ted Burns. So long, everybody. Georgia Southern Football with Coach Paul Johnson. Brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Always Coca-Cola. Rosier Ford, Lincoln Mercury in Statesboro. The dealership that does business the right way. East Georgia Regional Medical Center. Compassionate care without compromise. Hargrey Wireless. Private, powerful, perfectly clean. And Sea Island Bank. The better way to bank.